Yeah. Apparently, Steve Cohen just paid Max Scherzer to be an advisor to the team because Max has openly <laughs> said that he wants Buck Showalter as the next manager in the Mets. It's funny, when I was looking back at Buck Showalter's career, you'd think that he would have a winning percentage below 500, right? The fact that he's been with the Orioles, the Diamondbacks. I know he managed the Yankees as well, but he hasn't had a ton of success in every single season. He hasn't been a 86, 87 win manager consistently. You know, he's had his ups and his downs, but historically he is over 500 winning percentage. Like even through the toughest years, he could still show you how to win. And a, a guy like Max Scherzer respects that more than most. So it makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make Buck Walter makes a lot of sense with the New York Mets. He really does. He does. Um, you know, Buck Walter is, is one of those stand up guys in baseball and you and I both know it. Well, uh, there are a lot of not stand up guys in baseball. Absolutely. There are a lot of sleaze balls. And Buck Showalter, by nearly every account, is not a sleaze ball. This is a guy that um, appreciates the old school, <clears throat> can adapt to the new school, maybe even more so than Tony LaRussa. You know, Tony got a, good point. a really bad rap before he took over in this 2021 season because he couldn't adopt to the new school. And he didn't. But his players at the end liked him. The players overcame Tony. With Buck Showalter, if he were to step right back into this managerial role, it would look a lot like Joe Girardi, I think, in regards to appreciating home runs, RBIs, batting average hits, doubles. Uh, but also taking into account splits. Buck Showalter was really good with the situational reliever. Buck Showalter thinks about baseball in a way that not many managers can think about it. He's got this acuity with this sport that I'm not going to say is unmatched because there are people that think in a similar way to Buck Showalter, but is matched by few. I agree. And I think another guy who seems like they sort of think alike, you mentioned Tony La Russa, Mike Schilt is another guy that I feel like they're all cut from the same cloth. And I wonder if the Mets would possibly be interested in someone like a Mike Schilt, because I feel like, I don't know if Buck Showalter has something to prove while I feel like Mike Schilt might have something to prove. Okay. So you know what I will say to that? Um, Mike Schilt obviously didn't get along with John Mosellock and, and that's why yeah. the relationship ended. So how are you going to deal with Steve Cohen? You know what I mean? Like John Mosellock at least but knows was John baseball. Mosellock, but is John Mosellock like this is the game script? This is what we're going to do versus a Steve Cohen who says, I need someone like you to write the game script. I'm not sure if Steve Cohen is actually saying that, but that's what it seems like. So I feel that I don't know if they're similar in that way, but I understand what you're saying to the fact that he has been working well with ownership and in, in yeah. the front office. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that Steve Cohen thinks he's a baseball mind. I'm saying, you know, Steve Cohen in New York is a guy that'll walk into the manager's office and say, Hey, why the hell aren't we winning? <laughs> like that would <laughs> piss me off. And obviously, you know, Mike Schilt was pissed off by somebody who really knows baseball. John Moselak knows his shit, but he, he might've overstepped some boundaries that I believe general managers shouldn't overstep. Uh, but fair. such is the case in 2021. You know, we've talked about it. Um, yeah. I, I remember during the NLCS hearing Boog Shambi do a sit down with Andrew Friedman with the Dodgers. And, and it really just sounded like Friedman was the one uh, conversating with Scherzer and Bueller about Scherzer's arm. It wasn't Dave Roberts, but like that is the dynamic. And that's where the lines have been blurred between executive and manager. Um, I don't, I don't think the lines would be blurred between owner and manager in New York, but I think that would be a bitch of an owner to work for. I don't know. Uh, is it bad that I'm kind of coming around to Steve Cohen? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know. I, I'm just fired up when someone like that with big money walks into baseball and is like, you know what? I'm actually going to spend. I'm actually going to try. Yeah. And I have to respect that as a fan of the game, that the owner genuinely cares about the Mets. I think yeah. that's clear. Can he be a bit, you know, strange, especially a on Twitter? Bit? <laughs> a bit? But, I mean, we've dealt with some oddballs in baseball. Like, this isn't new. This we've isn't come new. across... We've come across people like this. I am, and it depends on the Mets too, because the Mets, with all this talent, 
I think if you ask a Mets fan, the only thing keeping them from being a perennial playoff team is themselves. Yeah. The Mets will be the Mets, but I'm confident in this year's roster. I'm confident Steve Cohn added the deadline. I'm just, I'm feeling good about the Mets. And I know this kind of got off track a little bit, but I am, I'm starting to like Steve Cohen. I, no, I'm, it's, I'm getting fired up. <laughs> it, it's not off track because you were discussing things that are pertinent to getting a good manager at the yeah. helm of the Mets, right? You are discussing things that make the job enticing. Uh, you just presented the pros. I'm kind of presenting the cons here, right? And, and you come to this neutral view of the Mets. One more thing on Buck Showalter, and I've said it before on this podcast. Uh, I'll say it again because I don't remember the last time I said it. I guarantee it was a couple of months ago. We've been doing this podcast for not not a long time, but like longer than I think we think it's been going. I, we're on what, month nine, month 10? I mean, we started April 1st going over Fernando Tatis Jr. contracts, giving them out to everybody. And now we're on episode 114. And it was crazy. Aram sent me a screenshot from the chartable rankings for podcasts on Apple on my birthday, and we were number eight in baseball. So again, I have to thank all of you listening. It's It's been an incredible ride. And the best part about it is that we're not stopping. We're only doing more episodes. So you can catch this ep- this podcast five days a week because we're just going to keep rolling. We want to get to number one. And it's all thanks to you guys. So genuinely, genuinely appreciate you all. Amen. Amen. And here's my final thought on, on Buck Walter. You know, he said in the early 2010s, we are at the golden age of baseball guys yep. are throwing harder than ever before. They're, they're hitting the ball farther than ever before. They're running the bases quicker than ever before. That's a guy that appreciates what baseball has become. And he's yep. not going to be a three true outcome manager, but he's going to understand that sometimes walks strikeouts. If you're a pitcher and home runs are essential to winning baseball games. So that's you know a guy a- I think that gets it. I agree. You know what's essential to winning baseball games? You have to have a deep understanding of the analytics and understand where to position yourself while also having the feel, having the eye test, something that I think an Alex Cora does very well. He's obviously analytically driven, but he will sometimes go back on his, on the numbers and say, you know what? I feel that this reliever should go in here. I feel that this position player should get this pinch it at bat things like that that he feels and it ends up working more often than not you have to have the feel combined with the use of analytics bob melvin another example another perfect example bob melvin is one of the best managers in baseball 